Hey guys, Kirk here from Acidbyte, and today I'm going to show you how to do our torn film transition in DaVinci Resolve. Now, the thing that separates DaVinci Resolve from some of the other editing software is how you import the files. So I'm actually going to recommend that you restructure the folder that you download from us uh, specifically for DaVinci Resolve. Originally, the file that you download from us is going to be sort of organized better for Premiere, where you have these individual folders, and inside each folder is a Luma mask and, uh, and an MOV. Um, so what I've actually done on my Mac is go into the, the Finder, and you can do the same on Windows, and reorganize things so that all of the torn film layers are in one single folder, and all of the Luma masks are in a separate folder as well. And that's going to make it easier for you to import these into DaVinci Resolve. So first thing I'm going to import is the sound effects. Just drag those straight into here. And once we've done that, we want to make two different folders. We're going to call one Luma Masks and the other one Torn Film. So now I'm going to go up to that Luma Mask folder that I made. I'm going to select the Luma Mask folder over here. And I'm going to right click all of these layers and select add to media pool as matte. This is important. You don't just drag and drop them. You need to use this option. And the reason we do that is because DaVinci Resolve handles these alpha files a little bit differently than other programs. But I'll explain a little bit more about that later. Okay, so then I'm going to select my torn film folder. I'm going to grab all of those files and just simply drag and drop those in. Okay, so now we're going to jump into our sequence. You can see that I've already got mine here. I've got my two shots that I want to put this transition in between. And the first thing we're going to do is go into our torn film folder and select the style of film tearing that we like. I think I'm just going to use number one here. Now I'm going to put this file on video layer three so that I can then take my first shot in my sequence and lift it up. And then I'm going to take shot number two and drag it underneath and you need to make sure that all of these clips overlap at exactly the same duration as the torn film layer. Now I'm going to make a cut here on my first shot in the sequence at exactly the starting point of the torn film layer. Then I want to select my torn film layer, go up to Inspector, and I'm going to change the composite mode based on the name of the torn film file. So you can see it says screen in the name. So I'm going to click and in the menu I'm going to go down and choose screen. Okay, so now we're going to go over into the color tab and we're going to select the second part of that first shot in our sequence, which we made when we made that little cut at the beginning. So now I'm going to go up to my first node. I'm going to right click, go to add mat, timeline mats, and here you're going to see all those luma masks that we imported earlier. Now because I'm using torn film number one, of course, I'm going to choose the luma mask number one. And now I'm going to right click again and I'm going to go to add alpha output. And then I'm going to take the top right blue square here and I'm going to connect it to that other blue square. And then with my external mat selected, I'm going to come down into the key tab and I'm going to uncheck the loop and lock mat options. So now I have access to these other settings here. And now I'm going to turn on the keyframe option for corrector number one, which will make uh, external mat appear. And then I'm going to turn off the keyframe for corrector one and turn it on again for external mat. Um, so from here, what we're going to do is a little tricky. Uh, we're going to adjust the offset of that Luma mask. It's not really that complicated. But what it means is that we're going to drag this offset slider here. And what we're doing now is searching for the first frame of the transition. And that frame is going to be one that is completely white. So if I pull it around, it looks like the first white frame, OK, is negative 137. So that's where our first keyframe is going to be. Then I'm going to pull the playhead to the end. And I want to search again for the last frame of the transition using the same technique, but this time when the screen is completely black. So looks like, OK, negative 137. Perfect. And actually, that's basically it. I mean, you can see now the transition is done. Uh, it's beautiful. You get this wipe with the. Uh, 
ripping film effect on top of it. And what's cool here is that you can actually adjust manually the speed of the transition. If you speed up the uh, the torn film layer, then you can just adjust your edit accordingly. You can make it fast as you want or slower. Um, you have a lot of control here. Uh, but the other cool thing about this package is that we have these custom pieces of sound design that go with each of your transitions. So you've got the option for number one here. Um, but they're each about the same length, so you can actually mix and match them like however you see fit. And all you have to do is drag and drop it into the timeline underneath your transition. And these are actually designed to be just a bit longer than the transition itself. So we've got a little reverb at the beginning and end of those clips. And that's about it for this one, guys. I mean, it's super cool, super simple. I hope you have a lot of fun with it. Thank you for downloading, and see you guys next time.